Hi everyone, it's Ula here and welcome to another very special video. Why is it special? Well, today I'm going to show you how I sculpted my very own model horse from scratch. People have been asking me about this for years now and, and a couple months ago I finally felt confident enough to try sculpting a horse in miniature. From early sketches to the final sculpture and casting resin copies, I will be showing you every step of this process. Just to clarify though, this video is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. I simply want to share my creative process with you, including all of the mistakes and doubts I had along the way. I just hope you'll find this video entertaining, relaxing or maybe even inspiring to try sculpting on your own. Before we begin, I just want to say a huge thank you to a person who made this entire project possible. Without them, I would never have finished it so quickly or done nearly as good of a job. My dear friend and amazing artist Yashmin of Three Slavic Horses has helped me massively along the way. Their knowledge and sculpting experience elevated this piece to a whole new level that I could never reach on my own. So huge shout out to Yashmin and make sure to leave them some love in the comments section. Alright, let's begin. It all started with an abundance of reference pictures and some sketches, both drawn and sculpted. From the very beginning I knew my first sculpture must be a very special one, so I decided to make a portrait of an exceptional mare I know in real life called Bima. I gathered all the photos I have taken during the past couple of years and printed them out in high quality. I'm aiming to make her in 118 scale, so I've put some models in the same scale on my desk for a size reference. The first sketch I've made was pretty good, but later I decided to change the neck and head to a more relaxed position. Using a ton of equine anatomy reference sheets, I sketched in a simplified skeleton to help myself with measurements later. Not gonna lie, this step alone taught me a ton of new stuff about horse anatomy. By the way, if you're wondering why I kept this whole project a secret up until now, well, first of all, I wasn't really sure if I can actually make this. This is my first miniature sculpture after all, and I didn't want to hype you all up just to toss it on top of my unfinished projects file to stay there for years, as I tend to do. <laughs> this is also why I decided to make this sculpture a big part of my master's diploma, which gave me some external motivation to actually finish it in a reasonable time frame. This tactic worked pretty well. I mean, the horse is here and I'm very proud of it. Of course, there was some stress and moments of doubts along the way, but overall, I made it. But that doesn't explain the whole keeping in secret ordeal. Well, I mostly wanted to focus on sculpting this piece in my own pace and making it as good as I possibly can. Have I posted a sneak peek or in progress pictures on my social media, I'm sure there would have been a lot of people already asking about sales and when I'll finish it. That's very nice and all, but also puts on this kind of pressure that makes me less motivated to finish something, so I decided not to post anything. Besides my thesis supervisor suggested, I focus on the artistic value of the piece first and tackle potential sales later after I graduated. So that's exactly what I did. Following Yashmin's advice, I made a quick plasticine sketch of a standing horse first. It was a very good idea because not only has it made me a bit more confident before trying to sculpt a walking horse, but also revealed the biggest issues I had. Turns out I tend to sketch and sculpt horses with their backs way too short, so I'm very glad it was spotted before I got to make the final piece. One thing I've been using a lot during the entire process was a humble pair of calipers. These are great for measuring, checking proportions and lengths of everything, so I highly recommend getting a pair if you're planning on sculpting something realistic. The wire I used for the plasticine armature was a bit too flimsy for the job, but I didn't have a stiffer one on hand, so that's what I used. Nonetheless, I tried to measure all the parts as accurately as possible, comparing my armature to the sketch along the way. I attached the wire for the legs by twisting it onto the main spine and then stabilizing the bond with super glue and baking soda. Then I filled in the bigger shapes with some aluminum foil wrapped with painter's tape so the plasticine has something to stick to. And speaking of plasticine, I just slapped it on piece by piece all over the armature. This is actually a very good opportunity to talk about sculpting mediums appropriate for this sort of miniatures. The plasticine was only used for a quick sketch because obviously it can't be cured or hardened in any way. However, it enabled me to work on the entire piece at once as a whole 
This way of sculpting is actually way more natural for me, but I decided to sculpt the final piece in two-part epoxy putty anyway. This means I'll be forced to only work on small sections at a time, which is far less comfortable for me. Of course I could use a high quality polymer clay such as Super Sculpey, as it stays soft until you bake it. I briefly considered using it, but I know it's way less durable than epoxy and every baking session brings a risk of cracking, so in the end I just stuck to epoxy. Alright, my plasticine pony is done. Not counting its comically short back, I'm actually very happy with it. It only took me one hour to make and already boosted my confidence a lot. Well, that means now I have to make the actual piece. Damn. <laughs> After some more sketching, combining some earlier drawings and a bit of critique from my friends, this is the final sketch I landed on. The armature making was very similar to the previous one, but this time I of course used a stiffer wire. And the extra set of hands that you can see over there is Yashmin themselves. They had to come over and stand above me while I work on these initial steps of sculpting, since I was so paralyzed by fear and doubting myself on my own. Thank you, Yashmin. It may not seem as such, but this step is actually very time consuming and requires a lot of precision. A tiny mistake in the armature may result in a big problem later on, so I make sure to work as precisely as possible. Then it's time for the aluminum foil and tape again, and then straight to epoxy. For the first time I had to use a kitchen scale to make sure I'm mixing even parts. I usually don't mix as big of a batch at once. The epoxy sets in about an hour or so after it's mixed, so as I mentioned before I had to split the sculpting into multiple smaller sections. To make it easier and not lose a sense of proportions, Yashmin suggested to make the horse's shape in two dimensions first and then add up the width later. To be honest, I would never have come up with this solution myself, but it made things significantly easier. So in just one day I made the armature and mixed three batches of epoxy a couple of hours apart and landed on this horse-shaped flat sketch. Mm, horse. Then I marked some more pivotal points, such as shoulders, hip bones, knees and stifles. To make sure they're shaped correctly, I used these amazing anatomy tables made by Hermann Dietrich. These are veterinary schematics of equine anatomy, so they are highly accurate and super helpful. I will leave a link to those in the description box. And I also had my reference photos laid out off-screen most of the time. Before starting on the head, I marked some lines and reference points with a fine liner to help myself place the epoxy correctly. However, this is the beginning of one of the biggest issues I had with this piece. I kid you not, the head was redone 6 or 7 times before I was happy with it. And there I was, naively thinking the head would be the easiest part because I sculpted some in the past. Yeah. Anyways, I start with the cheeks, forehead and eye sockets. The eyeballs came in later to maintain a sense of depth. For the tools I'm using, it's mostly the same stuff as usual. Some wooden spatulas, silicone brushes and my trusty gum butler, which is actually a dental tool. Besides the anatomy schematics and reference photos, this 3D printed horse skull turned out to be very helpful. When the first pass of epoxy is set, I mix a fresh one and continue on the opposite side of the head. At first I wanted to sculpt the entire muzzle at once, but it turned out to be a bit too ambitious, so I settled on the nostrils only. However, don't get too attached to those, as I will be redoing them later. A couple of hours later, another batch of epoxy was mixed to work on the eyes, which I'm perfectly covering up with my hair. No worry though, I changed the eyes as well. Then I added the lower lip and chin, which I'm also pretty dissatisfied with at this point. And I know what you're thinking. Couldn't she just skip all the mistakes and show us the good part? Well, yes, I could, but I chose not to. I always say that mistakes are a natural part of any creative process and sculpting is no exception to that. If this video makes you feel inspired to make something, just please remember that everyone makes mistakes and they are the thing that makes us improve. Be kind to yourself and don't get discouraged by something that's perfectly normal regardless of your skill level. Easier said than done, I know. At this point I started to seriously doubt my artistic abilities and wanted to scrap the whole thing, but my wonderful friends didn't let me to. I grabbed my Dremel tool and removed those huge nostrils and adjusted the shape of her cheeks. 
The forehead turned out to be way too narrow compared to the muzzles, so I was pretty much about to start over. I really like the eyes though, so I carefully removed them with a cutting disc to reattach later on. I tried to set up my camera as often as possible, but obviously didn't record every second of the process, as I would end up with way too much footage. Anyways, here's how the second attempt at her head is looking now. Still not perfect, but much better than before, which you can clearly see on this comparison. Feeling a bit more confident, I continued working on the head, adding more details. Eyes, eyelids, lower lip and chin, and all the muscles along the way. Something was still off and a lot of work went into it behind the camera, but after marking the ears position I decided to take a break from the head and focus on something else for a change. Her neck for example. In preparation to sculpt it, I scraped the surface with an X-Acto blade so the epoxy has something to stick to. Then it's off to sculpting the neck which felt much more familiar and went pretty smoothly. Then I proceeded to mark her shoulders, making sure they're a bit asymmetrical since one of the legs is moved forward. I then grabbed some rough sandpaper and prepared her tummy for epoxy, and I must say I'm very happy with this part too. It turned out very natural looking. Marking the hips and pelvis bones turned out to be yet another challenge because of capturing a walking horse. So allow the past me to explain it further, as now that I'm editing this, I can't remember nearly as many details and nuances. Czyli trochę zjechałam ganasze, bo zrobiłam je za duże. Cały czas się zastanawiam, co z tymi uszami. Jak patrzę na rewki, to wydaje mi się, że jakby nasada ucha jest w dobrym miejscu, tylko chyba muszę je troszeczkę jeszcze wygiąć bardziej, bardziej w tamtą stronę. Mamy głowę, w większości skończoną. W końcu mi się podoba i w końcu przypomina bimę i po 8 tysiącach poprawek oczy są równo. W miarę. Szyjka jest, szyjka jest taka chudziutka, niezbudowana. Brzuszek jest duży. Mamy siano brzuszek typowy, nietrzymany przez mięśnie jakoś bardzo. Zastanawiam się, czy go odrobinkę nie zmniejszyć. No i dupka. Dupka, która jest całkiem, całkiem proporcjonalna do brzuszka, ale też nie jest jakoś świetnie zbudowana. Z dupki jestem dumna. Jestem dumna z tego, że te kości tutaj od miednicy są minimalnie właśnie zrotowane, asymetrycznie. Tak naprawdę jak ogarnę tą głowę, to zostaną nogi i podwozie. A potem już detale, grzywa, ogon i bailando. So, as I said, I started adjusting the ears position. Turns out that bending them wasn't enough. I had to drill a new hole for one of the wires, as it was set too far back. I'm using a handheld drill and set the wire in place using super glue and baking soda. I mixed up some fresh epoxy and used it to adjust the cheeks yet again, and then bulk up the ears to make it easier to sculpt on details later. And here's how she's looking at the moment. Now I could move to sculpting the legs, but I discovered a pretty big issue with my model. It's leaning forward way too much. That could only mean I made some sort of measuring mistake, so I grab my calipers and begin the thorough checkup. Marking the bones with a dry erase marker was a huge help with this. After some head scratching, I finally found something. Ten staw dałam trochę za nisko, bo jak sobie mierzę tutaj kość przedramienia, o, to tam mi wychodzi troszkę krótsza, ale to jest w porządku. No się powinien tak tu zaczynać. I fixed the issue immediately and feeling a bit too optimistic, I started on the leg muscles as well. That's when I understood the leaning issue was yet to be resolved. Dobra, wydaje mi się, że odkryłam jeszcze jeden problem z nią, a mianowicie ona mi się wydaje za bardzo pochylona do przodu. Tak jakby cały jej ciężar ciała szedł bardzo do przodu i w dół. I teoretycznie koń mógłby tak iść, ale nie o to mi chodziło. Wczoraj mierzyłam jej nogi, ale mierzyłam je parami. To znaczy sprawdzałam, czy przody są względem siebie, wszystkie kości są równe i tyły względem siebie. Czego nie zrobiłam, to nie sprawdziłam, czy tyły wobec przodów są proporcjonalne. Tak jak przypuszczałam, tyły są odrobinę za długie. Piszę są za długie, tak z, ja wiem... 2-3 mm. Spróbuję to zredukować, nie przecinając druta, tylko usunę apoksy tutaj z tej części i spróbuję go zagiąć, tak żeby on stracił trochę na tej długości, ale cały czas był nieprzerwany. No i zobaczymy jak będzie stała wtedy. Cieszę się, że sprawdziłam to na tym etapie i wczoraj nie zabrałam się jeszcze za tyły, tylko przespałam się i sprawdziłam dzisiaj jeszcze raz, czy nadal wygląda mi to podejrzanie i nadal jest trochę sus, także... 
To make sure I don't change her leg position by accident, I mark her hoof prints on a piece of paper to have a reference point. Ja dostałam potwierdzenie od Jaśmina, że e, faktycznie piszczele są za długie. Więc e, czuję się trochę lepiej, niszcząc własną pracę w tym momencie. Odsłoniłam druty, teraz spróbuję je troszkę zagiąć, zmieniając pozycji samych nut w międzyczasie. I zobaczę, co się stanie. No dobra, jest lepiej, ale na co mi Jaśmin zwrócił uwagę, to niestety przednia noga. Uciekła mi za bardzo do tyłu, ona powinna być bardziej wyprostowana, co też ją obniża nienaturalnie. Czeka nas jeszcze niestety w sucie tego, co wczoraj wyrzeźbiłam. Trochę mnie to smuci, ale wiem, że będę zadowolona bardziej, jeżeli ona będzie miała poprawniejsze proporcje wszystkiego. As painful as it was, I did the job. This is exactly what I've been talking about earlier. You know, it's never like grabbing a sculpting medium and making something perfect and flawless at first try. Mistakes are natural, I can't stress that enough. And it very much was like this for me. Every two steps forward in the way were followed by a step back. Jesteśmy dzień po naprawieniu jej postury i proporcji. Dużo lepiej, dużo bardziej mi się podoba, jak ona teraz stoi, jak ona wygląda. Po prostu sylwetka jest git. A, no i mamy wymiona. Wczoraj wyżybiłam wymionka i pępek, także tutaj detale są zaczęte. Ale tak to jest progres. Ja, yeah, sure. Progress. Czy nadgarstek okazał się być za wysoko? Owszem, jeszcze jak? Życie mnie nienawidzi. Somehow I managed to quit complaining and push through all of the issues I discovered. And this time the forearm turned out much nicer as well, so it was totally worth it. I started on the back legs as well, but they were a bit too skinny at that point. And here we're back on role-playing a miniature farrier. This was also the moment I started to really hate the head that I sculpted. And for some reason I thought the best solution would be to make a whole new one from scratch. I do not understand the logic behind this, but here I am sculpting a new head, which turned out even worse. But I wasted too much time on it, so I desperately tried to convince myself it was actually better. Kolejną nóżkę kończę. Dzisiaj mam zamiar skończyć jej wszystkie nogi. W środę idę pokazać to pani profesor. W czwartek jadę do Jaśmina i będziemy robić formę i jeszcze ewentualnie wprowadzać ostatnie poprawki i prepping, więc też nie ma aż takiej spiny. Jeśli chodzi o projekt Druga Głowa, to na chwilę obecną wygląda on tak i kurde, no nie będę kryć, podoba mi się dużo bardziej niż to, co mam do tej pory tutaj. Zrobiłam dokładnie ten sam błąd, co na tej głowie, to znaczy dałam chrapę za bardzo skierowaną w przód. Ta już jest bardzo fajna i te chrapki mi się podobają. Ale jakby cały kształt głowy już gdzieś tutaj przestał mi się podobać, więc na razie jeszcze jej nie przeszczepiam. Wezmę ją do Jaśmina i zobaczymy, co on powie. Także no, biorę się za nóżki. Jesteśmy w takim momencie, że wszystkie nogi są zrobione tak z grubsza. To są takie y, kapcie z apokcji, które po prostu stabilizują, żeby stała równo. Pora na pierwszy podkład. Zobaczymy, jak źle jest i ile preppingu mam do zrobienia. The model was obviously washed and degreased before priming, but I didn't manage to actually spray it before going to Yashmin's place. As soon as I arrived, I showed them the new head and we both agreed that the old one is much better. It just needed one final adjustment. What was making her look so wonky was the angle of her eyes, and Yashmin kindly offered to adjust them for me. I am forever grateful for this favor, as I was absolutely and utterly done with this goddamn head. <laughs> But I must admit, as soon as I saw it in the final form, I fell in love instantly. She looks a lot like my dear Bima, and I'm so happy with that. The next day, I finally laid the initial coat of primer, which of course revealed many imperfections and bumps to be tackled before moving forward. Uneven surfaces and stray pieces of putty happen all the time when using epoxy, but it's usually only visible in uniform color. I'm using a Dremel tool with various different bits, as well as a carbide scraper. This tool is amazing for removing any tiny lumps and seams. As per usual, I'm also using different grid sanding sponges and filling the indentions with liquid green stuff putty. After the first pass of prepping was mostly done, I sculpted the mane. Long, straight and evenly cut, as Bima used to wear most of the time. This part was very easy and familiar for me, as I sculpted a lot of mains for my customs throughout the years. Actually, from now on, it felt more like working on a custom model horse than sculpting a new one from scratch. Using the Dremel again, I refined her hooves from the outside, as well as the underside, creating hoof frogs and other details. 
Then with a fresh batch of epoxy I sculpt on the coronets and some feathers which are one of Bima's signature features. Closely following my reference sheets I sketch on the most visible veins on her belly and add them on using a watered down epoxy and a silicone brush. The clock was ticking and at this point we had very limited time to actually make the silicone mold, so I pushed the prepping to my very limits. I'm in Spain, but the S is silent. <laughs> Luckily, I made it just in time. After months of hard work and many moments of self-doubt, my very first miniature horse sculpture is finally finished. Everyone, meet Bimka. <laughs> Because this video is already very long, I will be uploading a part 2 of this process in which I'll be showing you everything about creating the silicone mold and casting resin copies. When it comes to my thoughts on the sculpture, well, is it perfect? <laughs> By no means, no. Do I love it anyways? By all means, yes. This entire adventure you just witnessed has taught me so much about sculpting. I can already see a lot of room for improvement in my future work, but I can only say that thanks to the fact that I finished this one. The most important thing for me was for her to resemble my beloved horse friend, which she does and I'm very happy with it. This piece is also my personal homage to all the lesson horses who bear the weight of many children's dreams on their backs. Once again I'd like to say huge thank you to Yashmin, as well as Mati, Paweł, Oleg and all my friends that kept me going through this project. You're all amazing, thank you. This horse is a true milestone in my artistic career and I must say I'm very proud of it, regardless of its imperfections. If you happen to like her too, make sure to follow my social media. I will be posting a sales info very soon, here on YouTube in the community tab, as well as on my Instagram. For now the plan is to sell her in small batches, a couple of copies at a time, so don't worry if you don't get one immediately, there will be more. And if you made it to this point in the video, thank you from the bottom of my heart. All of your kind comments and messages make me keep going and improve my skills. I truly could not do this without you. Please make sure to leave your opinions on Bimka in the comments down below, I'm very curious to see them. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in another video soon. Bye!